The past week has been a somewhat puzzling one in regards to PlayStation news. First, we heard from the senior vice president of PlayStation that the PS5 is entering the latter stage of its life cycle. Now, we're hearing rumors that they're gearing up for a PS5 Pro model later this year. Somehow I doubt I'm the only one here who thinks this is all getting a little bit ridiculous. The ninth generation of consoles from Xbox and PlayStation launched under a stranger circumstance than any generation before it. In the height of a global pandemic during a worldwide shortage of chips, the very concept of even being allowed to purchase a new console was nothing more than a pipe dream for most. It wouldn't become normal for nearly two years to see a PS5 on the shelf of your local GameStop available for purchase. For most gamers in 2024, this generation feels like it's barely gotten started as a result. I was lucky enough to get both a PS5 and Series X in 2021, and I feel this way too. Isn't it a little premature to start thinking about moving on when I don't know a single person other than myself who owns one of these consoles yet? Personally, I don't like the look of the PS5 Slim, but I understand why it exists. The PS5 is a massive beast, on par in size only with my Philips CDI, so fitting the same components into a more reasonable sized package makes sense to me. Sony has released slim versions of all of their consoles since the PlayStation 1, but a pro version of the PS5 right now, this year? I don't see the need. The base PS4 and Xbox One were kind of underpowered even in their launch year. Their AMD Jaguar based processors were a bit dated and you could build a gaming PC for the same price back in 2013 that would outperform it. 1080p was the gold standard back then, and 4K TVs were tens of thousands of dollars. As 4K became less niche and introduced into more middle class homes, the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X aimed to meet the demand of 4K gaming in the living room. The PS4 Pro managed to deliver 4K 30fps gaming using a so-called checkerboarded 4K image which is a technique that renders only a portion of the pixels at a lower resolution and then fills the missing pixels using information from previous frames. This is less taxing on the processor than native 4K rendering, and would serve as a decent stopgap on their way to the PS5. Fast forward to now, large 4K TVs cost as little as a few hundred dollars, and we have an endless amount of media in that resolution to consume. The PS5 is more than capable of pushing these pixels at a respectable 60Hz in HDR, so what on earth are we thinking about a Pro model for? Personally, the biggest issue with the current gen consoles is lack of software, not the performance of the hardware. The vast majority of major releases are just remakes or remasters of past games. I guess that can be cool, but there's a serious drought of new and interesting experiences that really take advantage of the current hardware today. Making a more powerful console, but not having anything more to play on it, isn't really going to do much for anyone, Sony or the consumers. I like my PS5, I think it's a cool console, but boy, do I sure have more games for the PS4, PS3, PS2, and PS1. If anything, because of the unprecedentedly slow start to the PS5, this generation has justification for being longer than previous ones. Do you agree with me? Or are you excited for a PS5 Pro or even a PS6? I'd love to hear your perspective down in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Until next time, thanks for watching.